Good morning. Thanks for tuning in. Street Talk and all this stuff this great, cold Monday morning. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We did. Uh, had a wonderful time with family. It was good. But we're getting into the heavyweight part of the holiday season, and I know you're stressed. I know you're busy. So you need some self-care. You need some good entertainment. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Mike Mad Dog Magnati with, uh, here. I have got a couple people from Music Theater of Wenatchee's a Twisted Christmas Carol, which opens this Thursday night. Now, this show is funny. It's great. It's a spoof on the Dickens classic. You will love it. Trust me on this. But we're going to talk more with my guests in a minute. But hey, street talk and other stuff. You stick around. We will be right back. <laughs> Where are you at? Woo! Where are you at? Where you at? WWE Super Show is where it's at. Where are you at? Live in Wenatchee, January 7th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages available now. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, family owned and operated on North Wenatchee Avenue, right next to Hooked on Toys. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue uses only fresh ingredients handcrafted with love, including authentic Hawaiian barbecue and Japanese style ramen noodle soups. And the bubble teas will keep you coming back for more. Enjoy the culinary tour of the Pacific Rim with Hawaiian barbecue lunches and combo plate classics, as well as ramen noodle soups. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, enjoy their comfort food like you're one of the family. Street talking about this stuff, but I am very happy to have my two guests today. Now, again, Music Theater One actually has a show opening this Thursday night, A Twisted Christmas Carol. It's a spoof on Dick and the Dickens classics. It's very funny, and I'm very happy to introduce Mike Maddox. Mike, hello. Nice to Glad have you here today. And Sarah Fitzgerald. Sarah, nice to have you. Now, you Thanks, guys. Mike are in the show, right? We sure are. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the show, when it's going to be, where people can get tickets, and then we'll get into information about yourself. So mm -hmm. so be ready. We're going to tell you how to get tickets for this, but go yeah. ahead. So uh, the show does open this Thursday, as Mike mentioned. Right. Uh, it plays Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights at 7.30 for the next three weekends in a row. So you it have a lot Saturday of matinees. chances to see it, as well as two Saturday matinees on, I believe, the 2nd and 9th, if those are Saturdays. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and and it is put on by the Musical Theater of Wenatchee, and it will be showing at the Riverside Playhouse right. on North Wenatchee Avenue. And um, more information can be found about the show on mtow.org. The actual ticket purchases do happen f through the PAC website. Right. You just go to Numerica PAC yes. ticket office, and you'll find them there. Yes. You can pick your date. So, and how, how much are tickets? Oh, shoot. I think they're $18, aren't they? Yeah, that, I, I was... $18, yeah. yes. And now, with some people around here go, $18, you know, I wanted to go to a show at the Issaquah Playhouse. You know what they're charging for shows? Like 80 90 bucks. Whoa. Okay? And they're, probably they have a bigger population to draw from, but we are doing good community theater for a bargain price. But hey, okay, so... And you know what? If the what? price is an object, is, is an issue, we are always looking for volunteers to con do concessions, true. to usher. That so if you would like to, you know, volunteer for a show, usually those commitments just happen before and after or maybe during intermission, and then you can sit in the back of the theater and watch for free. Watch so for free. That's true. if the price if, is an issue, you let us know. there's seats available. This is true. Okay. Th that's actually the first thing I did for music theater was I ushered. Really? Okay. They tell you what to do, it's pretty straightforward, and then you get to watch the show for free. What show did you usher for? Do you remember? Um, 
A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Love. Yes, it was a great was show. Excellent good show. show. John Mauser directed. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so, Sarah, yes. tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Sarah? About myself, Sarah, or about Darla? No, about Sarah. Okay. okay. About Sarah. So we'll talk about Darla in a minute, all right? Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, so as Mike mentioned, my name is Sarah Fitzgerald. Um, I've lived in Wenatchee um, off and on since 2004, yeah. and this will be my first foray into community theater. Yeah. I got interested in doing something like this mostly because I have two daughters, and they have gotten into community theater yeah. um, for a short time we lived in Spokane and that's where they first um, tried out being on stage and loved that and when we came back to Wenatchee they have done the short shakes program in the summers yes, at music they theater have and done very well yes so. as well as the all district musicals and yeah. so I kind of got to play stage mom and volunteered and got involved like that got more comfortable being around the theater you know the theater itself and the theater community and so um, when auditions for this show came up I thought you know I'm gonna give this a try and she is doing a heck of a job. I mean, really, you would not ever guess this is the first show you've ever been in. <laughs> oh, Mike, thanks. That a girl, that a girl. <laughs> Thank you. A girl. Okay, Mike, about yourself. I'm originally from Ellensburg, mm -hmm. and then I went to Minnesota to go to school out there and was out there for quite a while, and I just moved back last year. I did some community theater out there. I originally got into it because it was... I've always been interested in community theater, but I did it with a purpose to like get more comfortable with public speaking. Okay. And then I just found that I liked it, and it was a whole lot of fun, and the camaraderie between the cast members is fun, and um, I just really enjoyed it. So when I moved here, um, my folks were still in Ellensburg, but I didn't know anybody in Wenatchee. Right. So I wanted to get involved, and it was also a good way to just kind of get to know people. Sure. So, um, a music theater is a good group. Yeah. It's a great group of people. Especially yeah. here, yeah, here in Wenatchee, yeah. it's a great crowd. So I ushered for a gentleman's guide, like we mentioned, and then I tried out for a small part in Shrek, which mm -hmm. is a cast about 10 times, actually more than 10 times the size of our cast. Yeah. So it was a very different experience, and that was at the pack. Um, so I'm really enjoying this one, which is a smaller cast. You get to know people better, and also um, the Riverside Theater is I it is a great theater. Better, yeah. You have, all the seats are good, as opposed yeah. to the pack, where if you're in the back, it's not yeah. not as good. Now, when you try it out, you put down on your um, audition sheet that you preferably would like a part with not too many lines. You didn't really want a big part. That's true. And you didn't want to sing either, did you? Because I can't. And yes. someone. <laughs> That's correct. And someone didn't exactly steer you in the right direction, did they? You know, because well, I hadn't read the script ahead of time, <laughs> and uh, apparently. All the parts are big. Yeah, like yeah all well, everybody's the, on stage most of the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no there's no tiny parts in this one. Um, but yeah, I was looking for a small role because I wanted to be involved, and I think it's a lot of fun, but I was a little nervous about my ability to take on a big role, memorization, and just the time commitment. But I think it's gone it's gone great. Okay, so who do you play? Tell us, tell us about your character. Well, first, let's do this. Give a little background of the show. I mean, a lot of people are familiar with the Dickens story, but a little background on the show itself, so. So I'll try. Sarah might be better at this. Um, it's a guy who is not very good. Well, not my character, but another character, Buford. Buford, right. Is married, but is not very good at expressing his emotions. He's not the best husband in the world. I think one of my favorite lines, can I say a line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite lines is um, he's, they're talking, his wife, who's played by Sarah, right. says like something about, well, you never say you love me. And his response is, well, I told you I love you when we got married. If anything changes, I'll, you know, I'll update you. <laughs> and he's kind of, he's a Scrooge. And that was right? his perspective exactly. on, right. on showing affection. So it's kind of like the Scrooge equivalent of affection versus, I think the original Christmas Carol was more based on money and stuff. Right. But, um, it's more based on, on showing affection, and he's very bad at that. And so I play the, the spirit of Christmas past, present, and future that comes in and basically shows him these scenarios of what, things have been like and what things could be like right. if he keeps his ways up. Okay. Hopefully with the idea that my whole motivation as a character is I'm trying to get him to change his ways when he comes back. Okay, so what did he... What else should you say about the story itself? So. Uh, I think that encapsulated the plot really well, and you know, I think most people are familiar with the classic Christmas Carol. This yeah. one, as you mentioned, is the Texas spoof version. So it is that you know, Buford and Darla yeah. own a barbecue joint in Texas, right. and the whole uh, play takes place within that barbecue um, restaurant with a couple of their friends. Right, and Buford, who is the Scrooge character, your husband, has an issue with his 
former business partner, mm -hmm. Hank Walker, and you play mm -hmm. Hank, right? Yes. So tell us about Hank a little bit. So Hank is the former business partner of Buford, so the former business partner of the guy that's bad at expressing his emotions, and he's got a lot of grudges against Hank because allegedly Hank was in business with him and stole the recipe for a barbecue sauce. Now we have to him. point something out. You know, your profession is <laughs> I'm a public defender, so I'm You're an attorney, defense. so when he said allegedly, he's, he's <laughs> making it clear that the fact that Hank has stolen the barbecue recipe That's right. is only an allegation. I don't okay. think it's ever proven. It's not of course it's flesh. So. <laughs> the facts aren't there. But it's alleged, it's referred to, and Buford has a big grudge against Hank for that. Okay. Um, so it's Hank that comes back and represents his kind of nightmare scenario for what could happen in his life if things go wrong. Well, because it's a little more complicated than that, too. There's the personal element that, in the past, the wife, Darla, and Hank, the business That's partner, true. had a brief relationship. Right. And so, as we learned through Buford's nightmare, Hank, you know, coming back for his woman, right. uh, Darla, is Buford's worst nightmare. Right. So we get to see we... that play out in the show, and that is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hank dated his wife before he got married to his wife, right, and right. he's always had this, like, paranoia that she wanted to get with Hank. Okay. So. All right, so you play Darla, yes. Buford's wife. Yes. So the long-suffering wife who's not <laughs> receiving the emotional support that every woman needs. And so, okay. All right, I'm sorry. You tell us about Darla. So. Yeah, Darla is a really fun character to play. Uh, she is, she's a tough woman. She's from Texas. She's, you know, owner of this barbecue joint. She's seen some things. Um, and she has a tough husband, and so she's, you know, tough also. Right. Um, but when the play opens, you do see her in a position of being, you know, just about at her wit's end. She's pretty fed up and yeah. feeling pretty done. Uh, one of the most fun things I think about being in this play is then because we visit these dream sequences that are past, present, and future, we each get to play different versions of the same character. Mm -hmm. And so as we have rehearsed that, it's been a lot of fun, you know, as we have gone through the scenes of what is basically amounts to Buford's nightmares. Um, it's a very different version of his wife than you see yeah, when right. he's on stage at the, you know, yeah. in the beginning. So it's been fun not only to get to know our characters and to explore what they're like, but then, okay, but now let's be this character, but through the eyes of another person. So it's, we've had some really fun discussions about like our characters' motivations and how we play each of those scenes differently, and it's been really, really fun. Okay, so how have you felt about the character development and that kind of thing? I mean, was it... Okay, you're you're both new to community theater, all right? Pretty much, you've done yeah. a few things. Small. Yeah. Well, still, I mean, there are no small, no small parts, parts, Mike. Oh, there are only <laughs> small actors. Okay. Oh, I was the small actor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have a little, little bit of experience. Okay. All right. So, what has the experience been like? Has it been what you expected? I mean, have there been? I know there's been challenges. Tell us about some of those. You know. So. <clears throat> um. I think it's been, it's been a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Like I mentioned, I was had a very small role right. and was a small actor in uh, in Shrek. It's been, I think, a lot more fun than that because mm -hmm. instead of being um, with like sixty people where rehearsals are, you know, more scattered and mm -hmm. you're doing, you know, your little segment rehearses you know, this one time this week. Right. Whereas here, every time we come for rehearsal, it's always with the same people. It's always with the full cast. I've really enjoyed that. Um, I think the biggest thing that um, has been a learning process for me is I, I've never had this many lines. Yeah. And that took a lot to memorize these it lines. Is, yeah, and, it's a challenge. But I think we got it. It was a little scary at first to think, mm -hmm. how could this possibly happen? But I think we pretty much got it. Well, actually, a good friend of mine, Matthew Pippin, you both are familiar with Matthew, yes. a great performer, just won the. Um, you know, what, which, which award? Uh, so lifetime of, Achievement Lifetime Award. Yeah, I saw that. Oh. He says he is a fear-driven actor, and I know exactly <laughs> what he means. <laughs> he works hard to make sure he doesn't screw up. <laughs> but you have worked hard on your lines, done well with them. What has been another challenge for you, Mike, you know, in this particular role? So I'll tell you if you can't think of it yourself. You think you can't sing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And what yeah. were you told about that as far as singing in this show? How important is it to have a good voice? Well, let me back up one step sure. and say <laughs> I came into this saying I can't sing. <laughs> I'm trying out for, at auditions, I was very clear. I even wrote it on my audition sheet. <laughs> I do not want to sing. I cannot sing. Please do not cast me in something that requires singing. And then I got a role that requires singing. <laughs> but it's very minimal. And as you pointed out, it's um, it's 
singing by a character who's not really supposed to be able to sing well, so it's, it doesn't really matter if I can't sing very well. No, it doesn't so. matter at all, you know? Yeah. The thing is, is that ex expression and enthusiasm and acting like you're ha having a great time, not yes. acting like it. Yeah, and not worrying about the tone because I'm pretty much tone deaf. Because so. it doesn't matter. <laughs> For this, it doesn't matter. And it's it very short. Matter. It's maybe like four total lines of singing, yeah. so very minimal. So, so, but it's good, yeah. good. Sarah has more singing. Yeah, okay, well, challenges with, uh, you know, playing mm -hmm. Darla, how's that been for you? Well, similar experience to Mike in that I sort of expected it to be, my introduction to theater to be a smaller role. Mm -hmm. um, I also did not read the script ahead of auditions. <laughs> so I, I- They'll learn, yeah. they'll learn, okay. I also didn't see the rehearsal schedule before auditions. I told my husband, if we had seen this auditions or the rehearsal schedule ahead of time, or if I had known how big each of, there's only five uh, people in the whole cast. Right. So all five of us, you know, are on stage almost the entirety of the show. And it's a lot of memorization. Your, your hubby is a theater widower, okay? <laughs> he is. I, it's good that we didn't see the schedule ahead of time because I might have talked myself out of it. Yeah. So I'm, but by the time we realized that we were giving up, you know, my entire fall winter to rehearsals, I was already hooked and loving it. So. All right. Well, look, I want to talk to you about more metro challenges in a minute, but we got to take a break. Okay. okay. So hey, street talk and other stuff. Talking with Mike Maddox and Sarah Fitzgerald. They both are characters in the upcoming music theater of Wenatchee production of A Twisted Christmas Carol which opens this Thursday. Now, this is a good show, folks, okay? Well worth your time, you'll like it, I guarantee it, you'll trust me on this, but we're gonna talk more with Mike and Sarah in a minute. But a quick break, street talk and other stuff. We will be right back, so. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and enjoy your dining experience while taking in the breathtaking views of the mountains. And you can host your next private event at Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, two blocks west of downtown Leavenworth. Enjoy the warm atmosphere of Crystal's event space and the enthusiasm of their staff. Not to mention their mouth-watering banquet menu, which has something to fit every group's needs. Reserve your date today. The holiday season is here, and life is hectic. Let Merry Maids help simplify yours. You expect a lot, and Merry Maids delivers more. They'll make your home or business sparkle for holiday parties, special events, and family gatherings. They'll customize the cleaning to fit your needs and your budget. Merry Maids are cleaning experts. They're licensed, bonded, and insured. Best of all, your satisfaction is always guaranteed. Visit online, merrymaids.com, and call for a free estimate. Then you can relax. It's done. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. with Mike Maddox and Sarah Fitzgerald. They both are in Music Theater Wenatchee's upcoming show, which opens Thursday, A Twisted Christmas Carol. And we were talking to Sarah about what kind of challenges and stuff that you felt in this, your first theatrical role. <laughs> yep. What else is, you know, what else was interesting to you or something maybe you didn't expect? or was more of a challenge than you thought it would be, you know? Uh, memorizing lines was definitely more challenging than I expected. Yeah. I was grateful yeah. that both my girls, because they've been in theater, were very mm -hmm. eager, almost fought over the opportunity to help me oh, run lines, yeah. and so that's been super duper helpful right. um, to have their support. And then, uh, so at auditions, there are three male parts and two female parts in the show, and I actually went in thinking I was auditioning for the other female role, Daisy, <laughs> 
and as I mentioned, had not read the script yet. And so I wrote the down that I was interested in Daisy's part. And then I was chatting with other people who were there to audition. And you know, everyone's talking about you know which there were two plays that were being auditioned for at that right. same night. Right. So we were chatting about which play are you auditioning for? What role do you want? And I mentioned that I had written down Daisy. And one of the other gals said, Oh, I was thinking about auditioning for her, but she has to get into a, a sexy Santa outfit. <laughs> and so I decided not to audition Santa. for her. Oh, and well, yeah. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. And so I went back. I pulled my audition paper out of the Did pile. Really? I crossed I that, that out and wrote Darla. And then came back and sat down. And I was like, Okay, I changed it to Darla. And they were like, Yeah, that'll be a fun part. She does get kissed a lot. <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing. I mean, that's just the thing about acting. You get to be somebody you're not. You yeah. know? I mean, it's just as well. And that's what's new for me. So, you know, you mentioned that you got into theater, you know, to kind of work on public speaking. I've done a lot of public speaking. Right. I've done a lot of things in front of a crowd, um, but I've never been anyone other than myself and so that is definitely a new experience it is, it, it's fun and it's fun. over the course of all the dream sequences and the different scenarios that the characters get into Darla does have to play a pretty intimate scene with several of the other cast members <laughs> she's quite a gal she's quite a <laughs> <laughs> and that was not something I really anticipated going into it um, and when I imagined all the things I was going to learn and experience being in my first play working through like physical comedy and intimacy stuff was not something I I had really considered. So that's been a challenge for me, but it's been a lot of it, fun. It has been a challenge, and it is fun. Okay, mm -hmm. You just remember that you are acting, and these are two people creating a transitory art form, mm -hmm. so it's cool. All right, now we've talked about your character, Hank Walker, Darla, talked about your husband, Buford, but there's two other people in the play, too, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about them. Daisy so and Bubba. So you mentioned Daisy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Daisy and Bubba <laughs> are... Of course there's somebody named Bubba in the show. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, we're being, I guess the screenwriter's being a little stereotypical about Texas, but um, Daisy and Bubba, uh, Bubba owns gas stations. Daisy is trying to become a big time cook. Right. A uh, sous chef. A sous chef. A sous chef. At a fancy restaurant right. like the Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's where she's setting her sights. Right. And they have been in a relationship. He's proposed to her like three times, and she's ready to move on, I think, and he is uh, continually trying to renew the relationship. And they just have a, I think they have a really entertaining back and forth um, between the two of them where it's kind yeah, of Yeah, they like, add a lot to the show. Yeah, they really mm -hmm. do. They're a lot yeah, of fun. very funny, very mm -hmm. funny. And, and, the gal, and an interesting trivia note, the gal who plays Daisy is Libby Poirier. She is the new mayor's daughter. Yes. So well, it's a little name dropping there. Yep, yep. <laughs> So good. But they're great parts, and they have, yeah. they have some great lines, for sure. Okay, so you open Thursday, okay? Yes. It's going to be interesting to have an audience there, okay? I know you've had a couple times with, small, you know, a few people there, but it's going to, you're going to feel that vibe that's really going to help, okay? It's really going to help, so. Yeah, it's interesting rehearsing comedy because we have heard these jokes and these punchlines right, right. and even the physical humor we've rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. It's not funny to us anymore. <laughs> right. And so I think we're at that point where it's like, okay, um, this is funny, right? Because it's not funny to us yeah. anymore. So I'm very excited for Friends and Family Night and for opening night. You know, what's going to be interesting is that you're going to find stuff, you're going to find people laughing at stuff that you did not expect. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we've already experienced that a little bit because we did tech recently where they make sure that the lighting is all right, right and all that. Right. And so there's more people in there than there usually is for the rehearsal, which is usually just us and the director. And we just, you know, so that's new people coming in and, and seeing us do it, and they sort of will chuckle a few times. Yeah. And we're like, oh, oh, yeah, that is funny, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, yeah, it's nice to have that feedback. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, so what are you most looking forward to, okay? Oh, man. I know that's hard to, to, hard to answer, but um, you want good crowds, you mm -hmm. want people there, okay? You want your hard work to pay off, but, um, but the feeling of performing, mm -hmm. okay? How are you feeling about that? See, to me, that's just, it's just a thrill. I'm excited, okay. yeah. I I mostly, I think I'm just excited to be in the theater for, for performing the show and to hear people laugh. I mean, that's the point of the whole thing. Um, it's pretty wholesome, cheesy Christmas it is. comedy. It is. It's very family friendly. I can't think of anything that anybody's going to be, would be offended by. In this yeah, show. there's no language. There's <coughs> innuendo, you yes. know. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's family comedy. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to be in there with a theater full of people and to hear them laughing. And hopefully that's the result we get. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. So are you 
are you feeling the vibe? You know, the, I am. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of excited because opening night. I mean, it's a, it's it's a big one. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think the hardest part for me has been just getting over the hurdle of getting lines down. Yeah. But um, once I have that, and then we've been doing dress rehearsals, so I feel like it's really coming together. Okay. I, I think the hardest part is been this like this past week, honestly. Right. Okay. Um, but when it comes to actual performances, it's like we've got it in our head, uh, we've got it ready to go. It's mm -hmm. going to be a whole lot of fun to have a crowd there. Yeah, bringing everything together. Well, you guys have worked really hard, and it's appreciative. And this, like I say, hey, Christmas. I know people are busy. Okay, I know people are stressed. But Doug, gonna take some time for some self care. This is going to be a good show to go to. I'm really looking forward. I'm going to try to get there opening night. And Rosie mm -hmm. and I also have tickets for one of the later Fridays. Um, so just wish you the best. Thank you. Know? you. It's okay. No, my pleasure. Thanks, you know, man. I want you to do well. But hey, street talking other stuff. We're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to come back, talk a little bit more with uh, Mike and Sarah. But hey, stick around. We will be right back. So. Castle Rock International is the Northwest premier real estate agency for large acreage properties, farms and ranch land, lodging and resorts, waterfront properties, and commercial real estate. Professional, knowledgeable, and discreet, award-winning Castle Rock International has the listings and the highly qualified buyers you have been looking for. Contact John McNamara at Castle Rock International today or visit their website for more information about this outstanding local company. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's automotive alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. Have you been to Boswell's Furniture lately? Yes, Boswell's has an expansive two-story showroom filled with so many great choices for our living room, dining room, and bedroom. Did you know that Boswell sells directly from their store inventory so we wouldn't have to wait to get our new furniture? Yes, plus Boswell's has free local delivery and complimentary design service to help us with the layout and fabric choices. No waiting and amazing customer service. I mean, why would we go anywhere else? Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. In today's environment, risk management assessment is a crucial process for your business. Risk assessment will identify, evaluate, and mitigate hazards. Don't let risk impact your business income, reputation, operations, and your overall success. We can give you peace of mind by transferring your business risks to the insurance providers. Call Stacy at August Edge Insurance today to schedule a risk management assessment for your business. Okay, we're back talking with Mike Maddox and Sarah Fitzgerald. They're both in Music Theater of Wenatchee's upcoming show, which opens Thursday, A Twisted Christmas Carol. So again, give us information on the show, okay? Opens this Thursday. Right. That's November 30th, 2023. Right. And the information and a link to tickets can be found on the Music Theater of Wenatchee website, which is mtow.org. Um, when you click purchase tickets, it will redirect you to the pack because they utilize the pack's right. ticket purchasing service. But the show is at Musical Theater of Wenatchee's building, the Riverside Playhouse. Right, and that's behind KPQ and the complex of the PUD. Old PUD. There, okay. Mm -hmm. So, again, three weekends. Yes. Two matinees, both first two Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the matinees are the first two weekends. Okay, and the yeah. last day is Saturday. Saturday, December 16th will okay. be our finale, our grand finale. Okay, well, look, break a leg. Thank you. You know what that means, by the way? I don't know where that came from. I think it comes because the, ca the curtains... Or by the curtains, you know, off stage are called legs, hmm. and you have to break one to go through. That's what I heard also. Oh. And you know why the green room is called the green room? Because that's the room where actors used to get paid. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's what I heard anyway. I don't know how oh. true that is. Interesting. Hey, yeah. Well, Mike, appreciate you being here. Thank okay. you. Okay. Looking forward to seeing it, Sarah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Okay, street talk and other stuff. Mike Mad Dog Magnati again. It's a great thing this Christmas season. This is family entertainment, a twisted Christmas carol. Get your tickets. We'll see you there. Hey, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.
Get ready to travel across America meeting the next generation of star athletes. You'll meet a trio of talented signal callers in today's show, including the number one prospect in the 2024 class. We'll also hear from quarterbacks in California and Michigan, and we'll introduce you to a rising wide receiver prospect from Chicago. Plus, our journey to greatness highlights a new Hall of Fame that celebrates high school football. That's all coming up next on Sports Stars of Tomorrow. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Sports Stars of Tomorrow. I'm Charles Davis. We're beginning today's show in Georgia with a five-star quarterback 